calculate e of x. Now, we learned that e of x is sum of xi pi, right? Or, or pi means really probability that x would equal to i. And you add up from i from 0 through n, if it's binomial or some other cases, just find all the values of possible i's and you add them up. That's, that's how you do ex, right? But then, this is for discrete when your values are going over some integers or some discrete values. Uh, what if you're doing continuous? Instead of sigma, what do you use? Integral. Integral. You'll be using integral. You'll be in using integral. And instead of the values of xi's, you would just use x. And the probability, this is, this is the PDF function for the discrete case, right? So we use the PDF for the continuous case. So this is how you calculate the expectation value in general. So let's continue. So this is going to give you e of x equals to 0 through 10 of x times 1 10 dx. Without even doing the computation, what do you think the answer is? In this example, what's the what's the expected value? What's the average? Average is ten. So, uh, what does that mean? Uh, it means that let's say this occurred hundreds of times. You're, you're working in a pool, and there's like every day somebody loses a coin. Or something. something like that happens, right? And they have to find it. And they keep track of the location where the coin was found. And later, after the hundredth day, you take the average all of all the locations. Where where do you think the average will be approximately getting close to? The more averages you take, you'll see that the values get closer and closer to five, right in the middle, right? Because sometimes it's going to be close to ten, sometimes it'll be close to zero. If you keep averaging and averaging, you're going to get something that's close to five. So the limit will be 5. That's what this EX computes. So what is that? This is uh, 1 tenth times 1 half x squared is the integral of x. You plug in 10 and 0. 10 squared is 100. 100 divided by 20 is 5. Plug in 0, you don't get anything. So the answer is 5. OK? That's, that's the answer. Uh, now, example six. Calculate the variance. What is the variance again? What does it measure? What what does variance tell you? Huh? How spread out the data is, right? So, uh, if this pool was gigantic, hundred feet then the vx will be bigger, right? If the pool is tiny, like one, one foot, then it will be smaller, so on and so on, right? Okay? So uh, that's the value that you want to calculate here. Uh, and uh, we're going to use the fact that vx is equal to e of x squared minus e of x squared, this formula here. Uh, we already have e of x. What's this value? E of five. x is 5, right? So we just need to find E of x squared. So let's, let's try that. E of x squared, how do you calculate this? Anytime you have some function apply, just do the same thing on the x part, this portion. This portion just changes to whatever you put here. So you have x squared times f of x dx. That's, your, that's how you find E of x squared. Which is, you have... Uh, See, you have x squared times 10, uh, 1 over 10 dx, and it goes from 0 through 10. Then integrates to 1 third x cubed, so you have uh, 1 over 30 times x cubed, then you plug in 10 and 0. So that's like 100 over 3. <coughs> 
therefore, we put it in here, you have 100 over 3 minus 5 squared, which is 25. And 25 can be converted as 75 over 3. 100 minus 75 is 25, so 25 over 3 is the variance. Now, it, it's a bit hard to make out what this means in terms of the situation. Uh, but I'm, I'm only uh, mentioning this because you, you may be asked to compute these things for various different types of distributions.